guys, it's Kim Jong Spoon. I'm back from vacation and I uploaded three videos for you guys while I was gone. I screwed up the release so we didn't have one on the first Wednesday. We had two on the second Wednesday and one on the third Wednesday. I intended on having them release one on each Wednesday, but I apologize. I screwed that up on YouTube. But nevertheless, we had three videos while I was gone. But now that I'm back, let's start to make some more. So instead of looking at some gameplay or doing some live gameplay or anything like that, we're going to do something a little bit different, and we're going to answer a question in a video. So, this video will attempt to answer the question, what ammo should I use? And that's a question that a lot of people ask either on the forums or in person when they're first starting out, and even a lot of the experienced players that I see don't understand the different ammo types that they can use and how to use them effectively. So let's jump straight into it. First we're looking at the E50 here. E50 has three choices of ammo, and this combination of ammo choices is what you will see most likely on the tank that you're using. Uh, pretty much all tanks from tiers 5 to, I'd say, 9 use, this, use these types of ammo in this order. So this is the most common one that you'll see. And because these are all derived from the military, they all have acronyms. So most people won't refer to AP as armor piercing, they'll just call it AP. So sometimes the acronyms get kind of confusing. I might screw them up, but these all have different meanings. So let's jump straight into it. AP, armor piercing, this is the jack of all trades, master of none ammunition, and this is the ammo that you should be firing most often in most of the tanks that you play. As you can see here, I have 54 of these on my E50. This is not the best E50 gun, this is the super long 88mm, but the vast majority of guns will have armor piercing as their standard ammo. The second ammo we see is APCR, which stands for Armor Piercing Composite Rigid. Armor Piercing Composite Rigid has the same damage as AP, but it has more penetration. Looking at these numbers next to the icons here, the top number is the penetration value that it has, and the bottom number is the damage value. Going down one more to High Explosive, or HE, we can see that HE has way less pen, but a lot more damage. So, armor piercing has 167 to 279 millimeters of penetration, and it has 165 to 275 damage. APCR has 196 to two to sorry 326 millimeters of pen and has the same damage. And HE has 33 to 55 penetration and 202 to 337 damage. So, AP and APCR same damage. HE super low pen, APCR higher pen, AP regular pen. So that is the ammo types that you will see most common in the tanks that you're playing. Now, let's t take a look at a couple of other ammo types that we'll see. Right here we have heat, or high explosive anti-tank. This is another one of the premium ammo, so we can see that AP costs 1,260 credits, and a heat shell for the E100 costs 6,000 credits, so heat shells are very expensive. Going back to the E50, APCR costs way more, 4,400 compared to 676 for normal ammo. So the premium ammo, which is usually the one in the middle, costs the most compared to the other ones. HE usually costs a little bit less, but it's marginal, 100 credits, that's not a big deal. That's a low pen roll versus a high pen roll, or a low damage roll versus a high damage roll. So it, the, the credit differential between AP and HE is usually really minimal. There's one other type of ammo that you'll see in the game, and it has the same characteristics as HE. It's called HESH. It's only available on British tanks, and HESH ammo is HE with high pen. So HESH stands for High Explosive Squash Head, and in reality, in real life, this ammo is used against uh, homogeneously armored tanks. So in the 60s, the British used this a lot, and basically... The entire shell was just formed of a blob of C4, a blob of plastic explosives, and when it was fired down an enemy tank, it would squish onto the front, it would plaster itself onto the outside of the armor, and then detonate. And this would send a shockwave through the armor, and it would cause what's called spalling, which is where when the shockwave hits the end, the energy has to go somewhere. So it takes a chunk of armor off of the inside of the armor plate and shoots it around the tank at above the speed of sound, and it usually melts it. So it's not a good thing for you to be inside of a tank when it spalls. Hesh is not super good. It's not used a whole lot in the modern world because not a whole lot of tanks use homogeneous armor anymore. Homogeneous meaning that it's just a big steel plate. Most armor is now composite, 
and that means you'll have steel, and then ceramic, and then Kevlar, and then sometimes just empty air, and then all of those layers are squished together to form this new armor, and it's usually much more effective than homogeneous armor, and that means that spalling is not a huge threat anymore. So Hesh isn't used a whole lot in the real world anymore, but it was heavily used in the 60s and 70s. Anyways, historical insight aside, Hesh ammo, as we can see, has the same damage as the HE below it. Hesh is the one in the middle here. However, it has much higher penetration, so the normal HE ammo for the FE-422 has 79 to 131 millimeters of penetration, but the Hesh ammo has 157 to 262. That is 210 millimeters of average penetration, and that will get you through the sides of E-100's turrets, the backs of most tanks in the game, the side of American tanks' turrets, pretty much the side of anything's turret, with the exception of the mouse or the IS-7 or the IS-4. Hesh will go right through it. And when Hesh does go through it, two things happen. First thing is you do lots of damage. You can get up to 550 damage. It's 410 average damage, which is actually more than a 120 millimeter armor piercing shell from the FE-215B, or the E5, or the M103, or any of the tanks that use 120 mil guns. So basically, with a 105 mil gun, with the 105mm rate of fire, you're doing as much damage as a 120mm gun, which is fantastic. The second thing that it'll do is it'll cause module damage. So, for an armor-piercing shell to damage a module, it has to pass through the hitbox of said module. HE does not. If it penetrates a tank, it will detonate inside, and there's this invisible sphere that the computer calculates. And, as you get farther out along the sphere, uh, it calculates different module damage values, so I don't even have to hit the ammo rack of someone with HE or HESH to ammo rack them, because as that sphere increases, you'll do damage to modules you're not actually hitting, which is pretty cool. And then all of the other ammo types are the same for each tank. So you have APCR, which is the black one right there, armor piercing, which is the golden one, high explosive, which is the green one, High Explosive Anti-Tank, which is the premium ammo for larger caliber guns. And then you have Hesh, which looks the same as HE, and it does the same thing as HE, just has more pen. So, now let's take a look at the differences between all of these, other than the surface stuff, which is different damage and different pen values. So there are a couple of things that each shell does differently from one another. The first one is called Normalization, and this is how well the shell handles sloped and angled armor. So if the shell impacts an armor plate that is 100 millimeters thick, but it impacts it at a 60 degree angle, it has to penetrate 200 millimeters of armor. But armor piercing shells have what's called normalization. And normalization is where the shell will automatically decrease the, the angle at which it is impacting the armor when it hits. So if I'm hitting something at a 65 degree angle, the shell will normalize by 5 degrees, at least armor piercing will, so now I only have to penetrate 200 millimeters of armor instead of an excess of 270 millimeters of armor from impacting at 65 degrees as opposed to 60 degrees. So armor piercing has 5 degrees of normalization, armor piercing composite rigid has around 2 or 3, it's much less than armor piercing, they changed it recently so I'm not quite sure what the exact value is, but it's either 2 or 3. And then high explosive does not normalize at all and neither does high explosive anti-tank. So heat shells are bad against sloped and angled armor because if it impacts at a 30 degree angle, it has to penetrate the normal armor, th armor thickness and then that at a 30 degree angle as opposed to a 25 degree angle, which will get rid of a considerable amount of armor. And then armor piercing is the best option. APCR is the second best option because it has two or three degrees of normalization. The second value you have to look at is the penetration loss over distance. So, for armor piercing and armor piercing composite rigid, the shell gets its energy, or its piercing power, from how fast it's going multiplied by how heavy it is, and then how focused that energy is on, energy is on a single point of the armor. So, armor piercing is traveling pretty fast, and it weighs a lot, so it has a lot of energy. And as we can see here, the tip of the shell is pretty blunt, so all that energy is spread over for 105 mil, it's probably like 100 millimeters uh, radius of armor. So basically when the shell hits, it's only steel or whatever, so it'll kind of squish, and then all the energy has to punch through armor that is about 100 to 105 millimeters in diameter. So that energy is being dissipated because it's trying to get through more armor. 
APCR is lighter, but you have the same amount of powder behind it, so the, sh the shell will travel faster and therefore have more energy. And then when it gets to the target, the energy is being concentrated on a smaller point. As we can see here, the tip of the APCR shell is pointed. It's pointy. So when it hits the armor, all that energy is being concentrated on a very small point of the armor, so you can get through it easier. So that's why APCR is more pen. High explosive, it doesn't actually penetrate, so I'm not sure what they're trying to model here, but if I fired a high explosive shell at like a tiger in World War II, it would hit the tiger and it would just detonate right there. It wouldn't even try to penetrate the armor if you catch my drift. It would just explode on the surface. So what I think they're trying to model is whether the explosion will actually cut a hole through the armor, but high explosive in reality doesn't penetrate anything. It just, ex it just explodes on whatever it hits. Heat shells are the other variable, so heat shells have no penetration loss over distance, and that's why they're great at long range. So, unlike the other shell types, heat shells do not get their piercing power from the energy stored in the shell's velocity or weight. Heat shells have an explosive compound, compound on the inside, and that is molded around this cone of usually copper, and so when it hits the target, the little red thing on the top of the heat shell is a sensor. And that sensor detects that it hits, that it's uh, hit something like armor, and then the explosive goes off, and it's shaped in such a way that this cone of copper is superheated and melted, and then it's shot through a very fine point of the armor, and it just melts the armor and goes right through. And then you have super hot gas melting everything on the inside of the tank. So that's why heat shells are great against homogeneous armor, because it will just cut through them like butter. So to clarify, armor piercing has average penetration and average damage. Heat shells have better penetration and average damage, so does APCR. However, heat shells will not normalize. APCR shells will normalize a little bit. Heat shells have great distance or range penetration because they don't lose any over distance, while APCR loses a lot over distance because it doesn't weigh a whole lot, so the friction that it's receiving from the air will slow it down considerably. High explosive doesn't lose any pen over distance because it's not getting its penetration value from the weight and speed of the shell. It'll just explode on the surface. And then Hesh is just HE with better pen. So when to use these different types of ammo is a different story. Going back to the E50 here, you'll use armor piercing most of the time. Shooting at other medium tanks, armor piercing. Shooting at lower tier heavies or equal tier heavies that you can pen, armor piercing. The only times you use APCR is when you can't pen with armor piercing, but you can pen with APCR. Can't pen, if you can't pen with APCR, don't shoot APCR, you're just wasting credits. And if you can't pen with APCR, the next option is to shoot high explosive. So if I'm in the E100, I cannot penetrate the frontal turret armor of a hull down IS-4. However, the E100's HE shell does 720 to 1200 damage. So when I fire high explosive, and it hits the target, even though it doesn't penetrate, it will still do damage. And that's a big thing that people forget. If you fire high explosive and it doesn't pen, there's a big chance that it will do damage. So, in front of an IS Force turret, if I fire HE from the E100, I'll do about 200 damage. That's better than zero damage and spending 6,000 credits after I bounce a heat shell. So, HE is an option against super heavily armored tanks. Mouses get shot premium ammo, and HE. That's all the only things to get shot at a mouse, unless you want to bounce AP. So keep in mind that you can use HE against super heavily armored targets. Heat shells are great against long distance targets that have no sloped or angled armor. So because they don't lose any penetration value over distance, they're fantastic at engaging at long ranges. And tier 10 medium tanks, with the exception of the FV402, all have heat shells as their premium ammo. So they have APCR. This is this is strange. People don't understand this. All tier 10 medium tanks have APCR as their standard ammunition. If you see me in a video having 47 APCR, I'm not using 47 premium rounds. I'm using 47 standard rounds. Again, these shells only cost 1,200 credits. The premium Hesh ammo costs 5,200 credits. So APCR is the standard ammo for all tier 10 medium tanks. For most tier 10 medium tanks, or all of them except the FV402, they have heat shells as their premium ammo, which have even more penetration. So instead of 268, their premium ammo will have 330 or 340 millimeters of pen. And because it's a heat shell, it will lose 
it won't lose any penetration value over distance. So they're great at engaging things like E100s from long distance or something like that, because E100s, if they're flat onto you, if APCR won't do the trick because of the distance, then heat shells will. The only other option for using HE would be to reset a cap. So, again, E100's HE shell will do about 200 damage, hitting a heavily armored tank. And so, if there's a capture bar at like 80% or 90%, I know that I won't have enough time to reload another shell to fire it if I bounce or if I miss. So firing an HE shell won't do a whole lot of damage, but it will do some damage, or it, it might do some damage. So if there's an, a hull down IS-4 and a cap, I'm not going to try to hit a weak spot or something like that. I'm just going to load HE and do 200 damage, and then the cap resets. And then I have another 100 seconds to figure out how I'm going to destroy this IS-4. So that's a great way to use HE. I have six of them in the E-100. That's a considerable amount compared to some other tanks, because the shell is huge, so it does a lot of damage. Going back to the E-50, she only does maximum 337 damage, so not going to do a whole lot, and that is if it penetrates. So if it doesn't penetrate, it might do like 10 damage. E100, the the shell is so huge, it'll do tons of damage, so I, I pack lots of them. And this will help me destroy low health tanks, so if there's an FE215B on 50 health, I'll either A, ram him, or B, shoot an HE shell, because... No sense in me bouncing an AP shell or wasting a heat shell on a 50 HP tank. I'll just shoot an HE shell and kill him right there. Easy peasy. Now, there are a couple considerations when using HE and heat shells, and we're going to talk about those now. So, let's switch over to the T82. This tank has two ammo options, high explosive and heat. The reason it has this is because it is a howitzer. It is very short. The bullet is not being accelerated over the distance of the barrel, and so it has to either fire... HE, which doesn't have any pen value because of its energy, or heat, which doesn't have any pen value because of the energy that the shell has. So that's why it uses HE and heat shells. HE, if it hits tracks or a gun or a rangefinder, will have no chance of penetrating the target. So I'll often see this. The side of a T82, if I hit anywhere on the tracks, I'll do maybe 100 damage. If I hit above the tracks where the actual armor is, I will penetrate because the T-82 has no armor. And so I'll do whatever the HE damage is, 300 to 500, which is a lot. So I'll probably one-shot him. If I hit the tracks, I probably won't one-shot him. So HE does not like being shot at tracks or guns or rangefinders or anything like that. Shoot HE at flat armor that you can penetrate. Heat shells are the same way. So heat shells, when they hit any part of the tank they detonate. The The cone of gases forms because the explosives go off, and the cone of gases gets shot forward at above the speed of sound. Now, this cone is not a perfectly straight line. The, the jet of gases will dissipate and expand as it gets farther away. So, if the E100 is at about this angle, and I hit its tracks with a heat shell, by the time that the jet of gases gets to the armor, it will have dissipated so much that it won't be able to penetrate the armor. So, heat shells do not like getting shot at tracks or guns or anything like that, unless you specifically want to destroy the tracks, in which case you shoot armor piercing or a high explosive. But if you want to destroy the tracks with a heat shell, go ahead. It's just more credits. So, again, don't shoot heat shells or HE shells at tracks or guns or rangefinders or anything like that unless you specifically want to destroy tracks or guns or rangefinders. They will just get absorbed and you'll have a bad day. So shoot armor piercing or APCR at the side skirts or tracks of tanks that you want to penetrate. There are, are a couple of tanks that have weird ammo selections. Again, we've talked about the 4202. The SU-100Y is pretty strange because it has two types of armor piercing than high explosive. So armor piercing, the normal armor piercing here at the top, costs just over a thousand credits, 147 to 245 pen, and 345 to 575 damage. The second time of armor piercing has less pen, but more damage. So it's kind of like Hesh, but it's not HE ammo, it's AP ammo. So if you don't pen, you'll do no damage, unlike Hesh, which you'll do some damage. It'll be marginal, but you'll do some. But if you do pen, you'll do a considerable amount more damage, and then it has high explosive, which is just normal good old high explosive. You'll see a lot of these howitzers, like the T-82, and there are some howitzers, like on the Panzer IV, that fire armor-piercing ammo, as well as high-explosive and heat ammo. Don't use armor-piercing ammo a whole lot, because it 
again, armor piercing gets its energy from how fast the shell is going, multiplied by how heavy it is, and then taking into consideration how specific of a point that energy is being transferred to. So, armor piercing is bad being fired out of howitzers. Don't use a whole lot of armor piercing on howitzers. Just use heat or HE. So yeah, this has been what ammo types you should use. If you like this video, leave a thumbs up down below and subscribe for more awesome tank videos.